If I wouldn't have sold it, I would have just burned it down to the ground. I did everything, I had everything, I, I failed, I won. It's not only driving such an agency, I was already running nightclubs. I, I, I did a lot of stuff, but it was never fitting into my inner voice. What is the purpose of life? Then came, you know, Freemasonry, extraterrestrials, all these conspiracy things, of course. For me, it's an ego-driven thing. Well, so this guy, wait, he had a family successful business, like, and then he goes and sits in a cave for 14 days. He's a bit crazy. That's what is needed to, 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 <laughs> to move ahead. Be crazy, be, be just different. You know, as a leader, you don't have only friends. And if people don't like who I am, so be it. Jay Gudev Ramesh with us. Jay Gudev, Swami Ravati Kanta. Welcome to the podcast. I'm happy to have you on. Thank you for having me on. So I'm going to introduce you from what I know, like this stage of our life that we've shared together for the last few years. And then I'd love to pass it on to you so that you could talk a bit more about your past. Is that okay? Okay. Cool. So Ramesh with us is one of the directors that we have here at Bhakti Marga. So you actually serve in terms of management of the, the organization, the structures, the, the seva, all the things that we coordinate and do here. Um, because we're sitting here at headquarters of Bhakti Marga. Bhakti Marga is in what, over 70 countries by now. And we're here in, in Germany, near Frankfurt, at the headquarters. And you are basically doing your service here. And from the, I think, early, early moments that um, I remember you, I always thought, like, where did this guy land from? Just like some from a UFO just dropped down here on us because you were very different from what we usually get at the ashram, which are people that when they, by the time they arrive here in Germany at the at SBN, they've usually come from another country. They've come from already some devotional uh, engagement with Bhakti Marga somewhere. And uh, they come very excited to to put on the saris and to put on the kurtas and to put on the tilex and to do all of this. And you were walking in the same way I would expect to see you outside on the street. And I thought, cool, this guy sort of is is something that I would expect to see more of, actually. But for some reason, you know, it's always not so easy. And anyway, we've worked now, uh, I would say, on and off together in many different things for the last three, four, five years. Um, I find you to be an incredibly passionate guy, um, which I like very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, and what I think is is always been hinted at me through conversations and through our working together is that you have a very rich background in in both business, um, in life experiences. You're a family man um, with your children. I often see you here at the ashram, and so a lot of it I think enriches and and makes you who you are today. As I encounter you and as I have worked with you, and I would love to unpack a lot of that because to already contextualize what I want to achieve today, right, in this conversation is that I think a lot of people, a lot of people in Bhakti Marga, outside of Bhakti Marga, when they become spiritual, they develop this idea that um, you cannot have any involvement whatsoever with the world anymore. Like this is it's the devil. It's a terrible. You stay away from it. Um, Maya. Yeah. And I think that even if it is Maya and even if it is negative in some senses, you have to deal with it. You have to contend with it. You have to know how to navigate it. You have to know how to manage it. Um, and so sometimes I feel like even if I do a lot of observation and I try to pick up things and learn and teach people, I don't think anyone ever takes it seriously when it comes from my mouth because it's like, well, you're a monk. You live in an ashram. I cannot tell you, Ramesh, how many times I travel to countries and I'm speaking about life and how to manage life. And people look at me and say, yeah, but it's easy for you. You live in an ashram. You're a monk. You don't know what you're talking about, right? So, okay. Okay, I'm listening, everybody. I think I know what I'm talking about, but I want to talk about it with you instead. Um, so before I dive deeper into all of that, tell me who is Ramesh Vadas before Ramesh Vadas? Who is Ramesh Vadas before Ramesh Vadas? Um, it's Jean-Philippe, <laughs> <laughs> born 1976. And... Um, how to make 48 years in a shortcut version, right. let's say. Um, I was a searcher, like driven by intuition, let's say, mm -hmm. given by the gods. So I'm just using words from back in the days. Um, what does it mean, driven by the gods' grace? So I was always being pushed. I kind of, you know, I visited 12 schools. I've been on three boarding schools. I have a normal family, I would say. Mom and dad, they are 
saying normal, it's not normal now, <laughs> thinking about it. So let, let's start with the mum side because this is where we are yeah. reaching this environment, right? By birth. So my mum gave birth to two sons. I'm the younger one. Oh, you have an older brother. Okay. Yeah. And I have a half brother, let's say, from the father's side. Yeah. So we are three boys. Um, I lived with one of them. His name is Nico. Um, if you would see him beside me now, you would already start thinking, wow, that's, let's say, the, the Maya side. And that guy <laughs> okay. kind of turned into the right direction because there's no, for me, there's no right and wrong. It's just what I was being asked internally to develop, let's say. And my brother is really happy where he is. And he's, I think he's even, he's happy or he thinks he's happy, whatever. Whatever it, it is. He lives right. an awesome life. So, but talking about my mother, so she was kind of one of a pioneer back in the days, like Rudolf Steiner, Waldorf. Mm -hmm. She founded the Waldorf Society in Wiesbaden. And then yeah. I was, as a kid, already pushed in something which was weird. So That's true. Okay. I cool. remain weird. <laughs> <laughs> and because I'm um, a soul, let's say, which doesn't fit into any framework, um, by design, let's say, all these schools and all these things happened in my life. And also I was then sent to a boarding school and then I needed to change the boarding school because certain things happened there. And overall, let's say the, the framework between my dad, let's go into, to the side of my dad. And so my mother was Rudolf Steiner and my dad was the sales manager of Tetra Pak and he was an inventing new packaging. So my mom was staying in the kitchen cleaning um, glass bottles with water, five liters roundabout, and my dad was kind of <laughs> creating packaging. So there was always a tendency between, let's say, a spiritual kind of approach and Maya, you could worldly, say. Worldly, whatever. Worldly, yeah. whatever. And in this sense, I was always in this, in this field where things always have light and darkness, plus and minus, however you want to call it, and right. you need to find a balance also as a kid, so to speak. And um, on the age of 12, um, or f actually of 14, I then moved from Bavarian to Hessian. That's close to the ashram, actually. Sadly, I haven't been aware back in the days that Paramahamsa Vishwananda is already close. So <laughs> in this sense, I really dived deep into school. I didn't do any... Um, education, let's say, in a normal way, where you just, after school, you go to whatever, you become a baker. I went to university to save some social spendings, let's say, right? right? So, But I actually, I have only been one day there. It was actually a funny story, <laughs> right? So I signed up for this university to become an architect because I just, I just wanted to be, um, how to say it, uh, accept it, right? Okay, sure. Because yeah, I was yeah. already running on the age of 17, my first company, cleaning bus stops. And so I came there and I came there by bicycle because I had no money. And I just, I, I, I still see this moment when I was just going into this big um, atrium, you know, where people sit in a, in a row yeah. and the teacher standing below and I opened these big doors and everybody was looking at me and I came with my bicycle, you know, I, I needed to go 20 kilometers on a daily basis and the the chain was jumping from the yeah. wheel and I was really dirty and so I opened the door back in the school setting like a little boy and I said like oh sorry uh, but my bicycle and then the teacher looked at me and said just sit down I, I don't care and the whole crowd was laughing about me <laughs> this was my experience of university and, and I said to myself fuck this right was, one day one day I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. I don't need this anymore yeah. because I was already earning my money. So I started actually earning money on the age of 14, you know, doing, collecting flowers for old women, going to construction sites, collecting bottles, just doing, doing, doing stuff all over the places, always um, with a smile on my face, um, with the right intention, I guess, not knowing what intention is about at this um time let's say and therefore i was always in the planet venus so i was always prosperity how you say it i never had anything which i was missing whether in friendship nor in relationship nor in money 
already as a kid and I was earning a lot of money because back in the days cleaning nobody wanted to do it and cleaning 684 bus stops on a monthly basis wow. um, with 16 sits up you know go up and down I would say I'm still one of the fastest um, window cleaners in <laughs> Hessian <laughs> so I earned actually a lot of money and then I started um, creating back in the days where you know there was dot or and then after that came CD where I said, okay, why well, I'm actually only cleaning windows. I could just do the prints behind it, right? So we okay. bought the first digital printer. And back in the days, the printer made one and a half square meters an hour. Nowadays, they do 110, 120, just to give you an, an feeling of right. how slow things right, 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 right. have been the back in the days. Yeah. yeah, And there was no Zoom, there was no real time. So, And then I became a salesman, so I really... Having a digital printer, doing the first exhibition stand for a company around the corner, then I ended up going into um, agencies. And because I was kind of a pretty trained, nice looking, smiling boy, right? The Coca-Cola thing, right? Where you just have certain rules, which principles, let's say. If you do your business and what you do based on principles, which is don't have liaisons with your business partners, let's right. put it in this perspective, right. you know what I mean? Sure. I ever succeeded to have 80% um, female clients in the beginning. And they all loved me. I was always there. I was no question asked, whatever it takes. I just took things and step by step we developed a an, an full service agency in the field of retail brand management. And then I ended up with one of the biggest clients in the field of sports for 20 years. I was kind of doing the European business for them. And they have one principle, which is just do it. And actually they paid me to teach me how to um, stay positive and be always. You were teaching them how to stay positive? Or no, the other way around. The other way around. Okay. Yeah, because you can, once they came to Europe from the US, right? So they wanted to beat the other big brand, yeah. which is based in Frankfurt. And I was kind of in this lucky situation to to support them to develop all these, whatever, retail systems, events, and, and whatnot was um, needed. And also the real-time speed in um, how they execute projects and stuff um, was kind of my nature. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, you know not, what I'm talking yeah, about, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm not, like, that, that part makes sense to me. Um, but okay, so then you're, you're, you're basically, from a very early young age, you just jump into to entrepreneurship in some way or another, and you're not fitting into the university setting, that's for sure, that, that's clear. Um, but then, okay, w once you're going into that, obviously, and, and especially now you're mentioning, you know, 20 years working with a huge company, um, how, do you get, how do you stay in that environment, being how you are, like in the sense of like not being your nine to five guy that is very normal and very like in the box, let's put it like yeah. this. Like how are you seen by other people when you're outside the box? Like, did you have a lot of interaction with people in the, in those places or were you working more independently? I would say I always surrounded myself with people who know better than I do Okay. in, in different fields of play. And I kept it to my natural gifts, which is um, being in the field of communication and organization and connecting the dots to, to get stuff done. Okay. And on the client side, let's say they actually acknowledge and valid, value these different approach of, of running huge projects, of course, with someone's just coming with a smile and saying, no problem, we're going to do it. And then, you know, when I go immediate res in the company, of course, then we just sometimes it's, it's pretty similar with what is happening now, actually to jump, to jump the line. Um, how, Parma Hamza Vishwananda Guruji trained me, let's say, if I really look back to the days, what, whatever I learned in this timeline mm -hmm. is now being really supportive to what I'm doing now the other way around because it's it's SEVA based, it's working in its virtual environment, it's not money, contracts and gold driven, let's say. like It's not the same, it's, right? It's yeah. literally the, the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And still the same, but you have to do it with, with a different um, spin and intention. Sure. Yeah, we, we, can, we can get to that later. I'm curious also about that. Um, okay, so but you being in that environment, I think one of the things that, that comes to my mind is at that stage, so let's say you know now we're 15 years into your working 
with with those with those guys do you start to see or did you see from the beginning any any parts of that life that just did, didn't attract you that didn't make sense to you that you were think, thinking i need something else that's actually when i when i came to um gorji baktimaga because i was i sold one of my companies mm -hmm. and if i wouldn't have sold it i would have just burned it down to the to the ground because i just didn't I had, you know, I did everything. I had everything. I, I failed. I won. It's not only driving such an agency. I was already running nightclubs. I, I, I did a lot of stuff back in the days. Successful stuff, not successful stuff, but it was never fitting into my inner voice, which I mentioned in the beginning that I was always, there, what is the purpose of life? Even not being capable to 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 put it in a picture, but then came you know Freemasonry, extraterrestrials, all these conspiracy things, of course, which going to distract one, and you can really dive also deep into these um, topics, so to speak, and shamanism, and you know staying in the darkness, whatever it means, which then the brain gives you a certain idea about this whole environment. But actually, what what the, what idea does the brain get? Because like you just mentioned, you were you're involved in some shamanism, for example. Um, I haven't had those experiences. I know of some people who have and, and speak very positively about it. Um, and so I'm curious, like, what it, if you notice, if you can feel it in yourself, what is it that drives you towards that? And then when you're there, what is it that that really happens to you in the sense of, not so much in, in the logistics, like the what ritual do you do, whatever, that's not the point. But my point is more, you said that, you know, it starts to show something to your brain. It starts to make you feel something like what? What, what is it that, that really you start to be aware I, of. I think it's an ego, like for me, I can only talk about myself. I don't want to judge anything, any experience of anybody. I, just talking about myself. For me, it's an ego-driven thing, right? So like, for example, in my case, so I was with several shamans and I was with one shaman, the great shaman of Greenland. So I spent all days and weeks in Greenland on my own, you know, with sitting in front of a fire with a drum. I like... Even once I was doing it, I was just feeling that's just that's doesn't make any sense for me. Like why are you doing it actually? Dun 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 dun. You know, holding my hand up to the great one and showing him I'm in a good way, and then listening to the teachings of the grandmother from the shaman. And I I knew that this all, if you if you bring it back to the Sriantra, right? And there's this dot in the middle, mm -hmm. which for me personal, Gurgius, right? Mm -hmm. So he's the source, and everything which is surrounding. Shamans are some, of course, there are a lot of shamans and people who are pretty connected and who have whatever. Yeah. For me personal, I always felt, and I was always passed on from the from one to the other, that I needed to to find my sweet spot, mm -hmm. which happened then during Dasha. Like, that's the shortcut of this journey. Yeah. And, and feeling, sitting with a group together with a shaman which is pretty connected around the fire and he's keeping the energy and he's doing the ceremony, whatever it might be, it's also pretty intense, right? Some shamans can just call the wind in. Yeah, for people who have visuals, they see ancestors coming by and going like, and f especially the Inuits in, in Greenland, you know, there, there was no war. They have really connection like 5,000 years back. Like on a bloodline, like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there was no war. This is an innocent um, so country, let's mixing. say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they can really they they are they are connected and they they support people to to dive deeper and to connect with themselves. And in my case, I needed to to move ahead to to really f meet this person where I feel that's the zero line now, which happened as I said before during Dashan and. I could now jump in a, in a different topic that this was the worst thing which happened in my life, that I meet a guru in an Indian uh -huh. environment coming from Greenland, let's say, or after Greenland was the darkness, so I stayed in the darkness. and, and well, You went into a cave? Or, yeah, in a yeah. cave, like fasting. For a retreat, fasting, like a, yeah, like fast, a fasting, penance sort of thing. Fasting 30 days and staying 14 days in the darkness. Why did you do it? Because I started actually with Robert Monroe, you know, these bilingual sounds you can put on, on headphones and then you can travel out of body. So I was thinking, I don't believe it, but give it a try. Not because I don't believe that out of body or the soul. Right. Now, I have always been in this field because of my mother, that there's reincarnation and we have a soul and a body and we do an experience. But to experience something like this, I really took the effort to 
to to put on these headphones and you need to ask uh, my wife like <laughs> I was literally going to bed with headphones and then you have to wake up yourself in a certain frequency to to get this point when your body falls to sleep mm -hmm. and your consciousness stays awake and once I reach this point I just the goosebumps start right <laughs> like I get goosebumps once I reach this point I knew wow I really was like humbled let's say right. I said, like, that's scary. That's really scary. And then I went to the darkness to really dive into whatever my, my ego, my mind, my thoughts, my experience, whatever is stored there to get over it. And after the second time in the darkness, I, I was ready to, to, um, to meet Palm Hamza Vishwananda. No, actually, he called me in. I, sure. I was under the impression that I'm going to meet him, but that's the opposite. Right. He called me in because I was kind of cooked enough to, 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 to serve him. Mm. But I think so. Here's, here's a question I have because to map it out a little bit. So you, you, you already start your business at 17. You, you basically go to university just symbolically. You have your business cleaning bus stops. Then it becomes marketing at those bus stops. And it goes on and on into creating agencies. You're also running nightclubs on the side. You're doing different things in the world of, of entrepreneurship and business. And yes. you have your your strength and skills as a communicator, as a marketer, as somebody who just has positivity and, and drive to get things done. And that makes you, in a sense, uh, an anomaly and stand out from, from others, perhaps in that, in that industry. At the same time as this is going on, we understood a little bit from your parents that there was a bit of a, of a dual nature upbringing there of somebody who was more business orientated, maybe worldly orientated, and somebody who was more spiritually orientated. What is it that drove you to those things like the Freemasonry and the conspiracies and the shamanism and sitting in the dark, even though like what you're, you're describing now for me, um, all of it loosely makes sense because even if I'm not participating in those things, if we're speaking about the ability to separate consciousness from the body, sure. If we're sitting about the need to go within and, and, and sort out everything you've got in there. Yeah, sure. I, I, I sometimes call my room a cave, uh, you know, so I understand the mechanism behind it somehow and why you would want to do it. But it was it, and this is my, my curiosity, is it boredom? Were you bored? And then you thought, let me go do these things to test because you've been saying something I don't believe, but I wanted to see if it works. Or is it... If I was bored, you mean? Yeah. Or was it genuine, like, searching positively for something? It wasn't that... Unhappy bored. Unhappy bored. That's... If I really acknowledge how I felt, you know, like... We didn't talk about whatever. You, you smoke a nice weed in the morning because you think you're, that's, it's going to be a nice day, you know. But why are, why are actually people doing this? Why did I do it back in the days to just distract myself from really feeling myself, like drinking alcohol, living in a wine region, smoking pot, whatever it is, right? And you had money. I, could, I had everything. Right. So again, successful business, you had money, experimenting with drugs, whatever else it was, casually. Yeah. Nice family. I mean, I know your family from Bla blessed, yeah. wonderful family. Bored, F unhappy, bored, unhappy, bored, unhappy, bored. And if you are unhappy and you are bored and you are you have the space, which is not also given to everybody, to really have the freedom to to think about it. So if if I'm really being honest to myself and I feel unhappy and I'm bored. So there's, let's say there's just an exit, whether you go right or you go left. There's, that's black and white. Let's say black is going deeper into nightclubs mm -hmm. and left is going to places you fear the most. Well, deeper into nightclubs, isn't that just numbing the awareness of what you know is wrong? It's like, it's I know just covering like this. It. you cover it. Yeah. It's yeah. like, okay, I recognize something's mess is messy inside of me. I can lift the carpet or I can put 10 more carpets yeah. on top. And pretend you're happy. Then I don't Happier. have to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I definitely, I think that's also a lot of the pattern that drives people to addictions and, and different things like this. It's, it's, they want to solve the problem, actually. It's not so different from people like us, let's say, in a way. I think the method of how they solve the problem is very different. And in the end, they don't solve any problem because they're just delaying the problem for later. Like it's going to come up eventually. Yeah. Yes, I agree. And on the other side, like, the, the the journey of life right the hero's journey i yeah. think for 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 a few people or the most it's maybe it's not meant in this lifetime for them to really turn around and look in the other direction because it becoming 
yeah, it's just, it's a journey to, to discover whatever, you know, most of the people who come to Bhakti Marga are thinking about Swami Akash's uh, podcast together yeah, with you. Yeah. I'm one of his guys, right? right? Like I had no big breakdown or when I met um, Guruji yeah, yeah. in the sense, like, and for most of the people, there is this breakdown, I guess, like Stefano Things said, for example, he was a dentist and then he just, he drops everything and, and then he moves into, into something which is super unknown. I was literally being empowered by him to, to, to get this proof that, yeah, you're on the right spot now, dude. Yeah, yeah, welcome, yeah. welcome. This is how I felt when I, when I met him. Well, what you're saying now that it's not meant for everybody in this life, I think is actually one of the most beautiful things about this framework of belief in a sense that we have, or the framework of reality, but however you want to put it. But, you know, sometimes people look at us and they're like, well, you're religious, you're spiritual. You know, I don't want to be convinced of anything. I don't want to be, and I'm like, well, I'm not trying to. And then you may think, well, then why are you doing a podcast? Why are you trying to get more views? And why are you trying to ask people to engage and subscribe and all these things? And I think here's a, a very delicate balance between if you have something good and you want to share it with people, yeah, that doesn't mean you want to force it on people. That doesn't mean you think that people are lost without what you have or that you think that they have no meaning in their life. So I want to make this like really clear. Even though I'm asking you, were you bored? Were you unhappy? And you say yes. That isn't like some knockout point that I'm saying. You see, anything you do in the world, in the end, you're going to be bored and unhappy. And therefore, you have to join spirituality and Bhakti Marga right now. I think what you've described already to some extent is a natural process, a natural evolution where you arrived at your own conclusions, you arrived at your own state of readiness, you made your own steps to get ready or whatever it is, and then this landed in your life in a way that makes it work. Now, I know that there's some inconvenience to that and we'll come to that after, but I'm very much against forcing things onto people. I actually don't like it, even though you say, well, I'm supposed to be preaching and convincing people I've been in the in the area of like religious debate I hate it I think it's so silly it's just people trying to force ideas into the brain and into the framework of other people where it's like you're just trying to to stuff a square into a circle or whatever it is and it I just feel like yes there are moments where a conversation can be a trigger for somebody to go wow now I got it right but most of the time People learn from their own journey and their own experience to the point where you don't need to convince them of anything. They open up and they say, I'm ready. Like, I want this now. I am here for this. The reason I say this also is because I was in uh, Portugal just the uh, past weekend. And I was giving a talk and a really sweet old lady, she's smiling there, smiling, listening to the whole talk. And then she asks me a question. She, she speaks to me. And she basically talks about how she likes very much what I'm saying and she likes very much the feeling around the place. It's all very peaceful and nice, but she feels um, like she's missing something. Like something is still missing for her to make the step into spirituality, like as a real serious thing. She feels attraction, but to make it her lifestyle, to make it her whole purpose, she feels like something's missing. And she asked me, what can I advise her? What would be my advice for how she can get whatever is missing? I'm curious, right? what did you say? I said to her, I think you're going to expect me to say you should meet Paramahamsa Vishwananda, right? And I said to her, but I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say you should carry on living life and life will slap you in the face eventually. You will bang your own head against that wall so many times to the point where you will say, um, I want it now. I'm ready now. I don't have any peace missing. And when you think that you don't have a peace missing, the peace that's missing will come to you and show you how to complete your life even more. And I said to her, the reason I say this is because any other version of this story is unnatural. It's, gonna, it's, it's something or someone forcing you to be ready before you're ready, to take something that you're not willing to take, that you don't want to take. I agree. I hate convincing people to do something they don't want to do. But haven't you, have you always been that wise? Like talking about no, myself, no, I was convincing people. Not at all. Jesus Christ. No, when I got into the religious debate yeah. scene, I mean, I got it because Guruji sent me there to learn something. Yeah. yeah. And I learned plenty. But before then, when I first got into philosophy and, and, and theology and all of this, because I wasn't always like that in, in my spiritual life. I was a Kirtan guy. I was just like, let's just sing, dance. I'm good. Take some prashad at the end. 
that's life, right? So when I got into into thinking and into ideas and, and debate and I studied a lot, I read a lot, I watched a lot, I participated in a lot and there was 100% a fire of like, now I need to write books and I need to convert people and I'm going to go and challenge this guy and that guy there, his argument is stupid and I'm going to go and debate him and convince him. All of this was the energy, all of this. I still feel like I can do that if needed, but it's I just don't have any attraction for that because once you, it's like... um. You know, people in show business, like actors, they always talk about the industry and say, it's not what you think it is. Like it's heavy stuff or you think you want fame and then you get it. I've had that realization at almost every step of my life in Bhakti Marga. I think I want this, I get it. It's not what I thought it was. And then you have to like reimagine and get a new perspective to make your new peace and new acceptance with what it actually is, not what you thought it was going to be. So for example this if i had met someone like you and you tell me i'm bored and unhappy i would have gone like this nice this is a challenge for me now to convince this guy to now come and take darshan with paramahamsa vishwananda right that would have been an exciting thing for me right if i see the same situation now i don't get excited in the same way i would almost be like smiling internally like i hope this guy gets ready i hope he he is ready um and I would invite you, I, I, would, I would still invite you because I think if I don't invite you, kind of what is the purpose of me? I would still invite you, but I would not make a th- an attempt to convince you or fight you or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I got it. Complete different energy. And again, I don't want to go too much into the lessons I've learned through all of this, but but back to you, to your story because unhappy and bored and you come into this, um, let's say, pursuit of... You know, something because you again you, you go into shamanism and these different things that you mentioned did you feel ready coming out of the cave like i'm ready for something else the next step or or something like this yes of course if you if you stay like two years in a row like 14 days in the darkness while in total fasting 30 days and you just have these experience with yourself right there's something where you connect to whatever it might be, source, darkness, consciousness, gods, I don't know, I still don't know. And I'm happy I don't need to think about it any further because I found my guru. But coming out of this situation, you feel empowered, like yeah. the ego kicks full blast in and then you want to convince the world. Like, of course I was sharing and so many people are like, just take the darkness as an example. Like how many people just look at you like, what, you go in the darkness? I said, yeah, and what? Nothing. I said yeah, it's only you. Like, and the door is open. You just go. I, w- I wouldn't do it. How can you convince someone who's not willing to go to the darkness and just meet his thoughts, emotions, feelings um, to to follow a master? Why, well, why were you willing? Like, what do you think? Because willing to go there. Yeah. Because it is different. It is strange or whatever. Because go the places you fear the most. It's a sentence which was always kind of in the backyard of of my mind. Like That's the right way to do things. Go the places you fear the most. Okay. Because that's where you go out of your comfort zone Mm -hmm. in this sense. Mm -hmm. And the Robert Monroe Institute was this um, feeling of out of body journey, which I had this little glimpse. I knew there is something huge which is untapped in my life. And... I want to at least have a little effort done by myself to 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 connect with it. So after the first the first year, when I did it in the first year, I I went through all my stuff. It was it's it's yeah, there's a lot of darkness now nowadays. Let's say it original comes from um, from the Himalayas, from the Bhutan. There was one one. It's her name is Gerti. So I I knew her. There's also a soul connection happened before when I saw her the first time. I felt that's my grandmother. So she she's literally she's on the age of seventy five. She's doing it since thirty years. So she's really she brought it from there to Europe, right? And she, it's in her house. You so you you staying under the roof. It's everything. As I said, your toilet, a shower, a bed, done. But. Since she she experienced both sides, um, one side was let's say she become an a doctor and with all this university knowledge to actually um, facilitate people diving into their 
psychic, whatever it might be. And the other side is the energetical shamanism thing, let's say. And once I went in there, like she just comes in for 40 minutes on a daily basis into the darkness. And if you want to, you can have a conversation. But she comes in and just asks you, so Swami, which dream you want to talk about? The one on the motorbike or the one where you have been in snow? And it's like, whoa what is happening? Like, this was my first experience in the first year. So and She was basically saying what your dreams were and she was right. Yeah, of course. And right. she's connected. Like, she's kind of, let's say, that's her dharma. Mm -hmm. That's her life purpose to guide people through this experience of whatever is memorized in their consciousness. Right. This was my first year. And the second year, I actually, I experienced, it's not dark in the darkness when all these melatonin and serotonin and all these processes are being activated on a chemical basis, let's say, it's not dark anymore. You're going to hear sounds, you're going to see colors. But in the end, I was again bored, happy bored. This time happy bored, I would say. I was literally sitting there and I was missing drama, <laughs> interaction. And I knew when I went out there, okay, I'm going to sell my company, I'm going to do this. That's actually... I need to follow this path. And then a few weeks later, I had my first darshan. And so Guruji actually helped me to, to, to not lose this momentum of, of knowing, guy, that's the, 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 the spot where you have to, to, to catch up and, and move ahead. Well, I think there's something beautiful you just said there. Like it's, it's quite a real analogy, I would say, for who we are. Like human beings, we are relational creatures. We relate to each other. We, we're not, you know, we don't live in isolation. But I think because we don't know ourselves, even 20%, like forget 100%, yeah, but just like- Five? Yeah, like we don't know One. why don't we know. think the yeah. way we do, why we act the way we do, we, what really makes us happy, et cetera. We don't know ourselves in that way. And we have such incoherence inside of ourselves between our thinking, our actions, our feelings, like it's all, all over the place, chaos, right? We think one thing, we do yeah. another and whatever. We become unhappy bored, right? Because we do relate we're out there constantly relating. You I mean, you, like you said, you're doing all sorts of things. And yet the, the result of that activity is so disappointing. It's so limited. It's so basic. Or just a moment of happiness. Yeah, yeah. That you just go, I want it. Like, it's not the framework that's wrong of relating. Because some people then, they become bitter. They turn away from the world and be like, they turn away from people. I don't like people. I don't like the world. I don't like all of this. And they mm -hmm. close themselves up for, for these reasons. But in the darkness, as you were finding out more about yourself and understanding yourself better, you, you actually started to miss full the human nature of relating yeah. because it's who we are. Drama, really drama. Right, right. And it's, it's funny because it's, it's, I think people, when they, when they look at spirituality sometimes, even me as a monk, and they go, but don't you get bored? Or like, don't you miss certain parts of life? And I, and I often have to tell them, you know, we do in, in general very much the same things you do. We do them from a different space and for a different purpose, but I'm constantly relating to people all the time, like all the time. I'm constantly engaging. There's plenty of drama in my life, right? And at the same time, because there's a foundation of self-knowing and self-acceptance and self-confidence like and, and whatever else, because of work that has been done to me by Guruji and, and by me, um, it doesn't get to those negative outcomes in the same way as as... I clearly see in so many people, like depression is so massively spread at the moment. And it's only getting worse from my perspective. For sure. Like for sure. Based and, on fear. Yeah. 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 But isn't, but that's the thing. Like when you said you're going, you know, face what you fear. To me, it's, it's, it's one of the best advices you can get. It's easily said, but once you have to do it. Well, yeah. And you get called all sorts of things. I mean, I, I'm sure someone listening to this will think, well, so this guy, wait, he had a family successful business, like genuinely successful. And then he goes and sits in a cave for 14 days and fasts for 30 days. He's a bit crazy. I think like that's, it is crazy. That's what is needed to, 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 <laughs> to move ahead, to be a little bit different. Everybody go to the cave, yeah. fast. Be crazy. Be, be just different. Just don't, just think out of the box. Just really. Well, there, there I agree with you hundred percent. Yeah. It's about out of the box. Yeah. Because I think, um, and there's a grounded way to look at that as well. Because sometimes people think, oh, so what you're saying is go and try everything and be, be, be experimental. And it's like, well, maybe, but n not, it doesn't have to be that way. Another person asked me that same meeting in Portugal. 
Um, well, she didn't ask me. She interrupted my talk. She just liked to. She wanted to do, make it like a like a, a duet, like a double talk. And I was just like politely listening to this sweet old lady constantly interrupting me. And I was like, okay. But what I what what she was saying that I thought was interesting. Um, but isn't it just normal? Because I was talking about happiness and real happiness. And she's like, but isn't it normal that sometimes we're happy and sometimes we're not? And life is like that, up and down. And I said, you see, that's the biggest lie human beings have been led to believe. That it's normal that life should be up and down and, and happy and sad and everything else. And I said, yeah, it's normal to the version of you that has been programmed that way. And if you do what everyone else does, you will get the experience that everybody else gets. And then you call that normal, which is sometimes I have a good day, sometimes I have a shit day, right? And I still live like that. Don't get me wrong. I still have days when I'm, when I'm feeling much better and much worse. That isn't my point. My point is, is something wildly different, which is, but is it possible? Has it been shown to me, proven to me by anyone at any time in history, including right now, that that is not a necessary way to live life? It doesn't have to be up and down always, where sometimes I'm happy and sometimes I'm not. Can it be that I actually tap into something that makes me constantly happy or even beyond happy, blissful? realized, fulfilled, in love, whatever it may be? Is it possible? Just as a question. And when I have someone like Guruji just staring at me in the face, being yeah. who he is, I go, yeah, it is possible. You, you know me when I get, you know, in, in meetings, when I just start like, I need, I need yeah. something comes up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what this reminds me? Like, I think the root, let's let, if we want to talk about the root, what helped me in my personal case, like, people even don't know about sadness or happiness. Yeah. Like we are so disconnected from, from these, I call it topics to keep it generic and neutral. Yeah. Like when I came to, to, um, to Bhakti Marga and to, to Guruji, I met a guy as a long-term devotee of him and he actually, and I'm happy if I'm allowed to, to just share it, right? Sure, you, you might see it differently. Like he just gave me the, the big five, right? And I was like, what is it about? And he said like, Tell me your feelings. And I said, like, feelings, like love? And he said, no, love, it's not a feeling. Love is eta, it's ever existing, it's, it's unlimited, right? So it's not, it has nothing to do with you. What do you think? Oh, okay. Um, to be jealous? I said, no, 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 that comes from your mind, that's an emotion. And I think I'm just raising these points to, if you ask someone what is actually the nature, what are the feelings? Like if you need to name them, like, and then it also comes back to language and all these things. So he told me, you might see it different. Like we have five feelings. So it's to be sad, right? If you think on a little, just a little kid, two years old, you have it, you know, it can be sad, can be happy. And then he said, and what is, what comes after happy, right? When, when, when goddess is in the game, mm -hmm. What is well, bliss? I don't know. Yeah, it's it's bliss. It's yeah. joyful. Yeah. yeah, becomes joyful. Mm -hmm. And then we have two other things. One is anger. That's a feeling like it's not if I take your mobile away and you punch me. That's the wrong anger, right? The anger if some someone is doing something to you within your let's say your 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 the the, the energetical f framework or someone which you love to the beloved ones, then you are allowed to punch someone and get anger. Don't kill him, but just <laughs> clear the situation. Just, just making that The clear. right anger, right? Right, right? And then we have scared. Mm -hmm. And scared was for me one thing to, to think about it for a feeling. In Germany, we don't even have a word which actually describes scared because it's, no. Because Germans are never scared. No, no like <laughs> we shouldn't be scared. Fight or flight, right? right? Like we are scared if we could just get a little box where just something jumps out. We're like, we, yeah. We, yeah, you, or we fight. There's, right. there's nothing in between and we don't even have a word in Germany to, which describes to be scared, mm -hmm. to this feeling. And I think that now going into conspiracy stuff, that this whole thing is rigged. Whoever did, you know, the translations and the whatever the church and the kings and and the lords whoever gave not the lower ones language back in the days they took care that certain things are just not being connected to what we feel right so if we really observe our feelings let's say these five mm -hmm. and 
if my wife has the toothbrush again in the in the thing which annoys me i shouldn't yell at her because that's an emotion and if i observe whatever kicks in and it's not connected to a feeling i just better shut up and think okay this time you don't connect with me this little emotion thing which comes from the mind obviously and then the life gets a little bit smoother and then you start one at least in my case i started to really observe these feelings mm -hmm. and once whatever i felt was not connected to these big fives i i knew it's just whatever i experienced and now connecting with something which is happening to show me that i didn't went through it back in the days maybe my mom always told me i have to do the glass to the left side and now the glass on the right side is just annoying for me but I'm not going to communicate it to you because I observe myself and I knew it's not a feeling, therefore it's mind-based, it's ego, I better don't do it. And and then you transform and you go a little bit deeper into who are you actually in this moment if you observe the outside within, what is happening. And this is what I did personal to, to, to get to know me better and then really know, you know, coming out of the darkness feeling happy, yeah, like you are in the light again that's it's done like this happiness is done and then you have to to see okay what i'm doing and how to 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 connect to this feeling again which is i guess still so limited compared to what an unrealized being sure, might sure. feel and to be happy let's say to to have this everlasting happiness well i think i think the darkness even if you look at the back of the darkness the darkness is a metaphor also, it's not just a physical thing, right? The darkness of is just where you can't see. The absence of light just makes you incapable of seeing, feeling, whatever it is. But as you said, you start to adapt, right? But I think it's also this, like in, in general with ourselves, we have to go into the unknown, the dark, yeah. to find the great, the greatest thing that is available to us. And I think it lies in the unknown, not in the known. Because if it was already in the known, in the in the quote unquote light that we currently have, we wouldn't be feeling one percent of what we feel how could you feel bored how could you feel unhappy if you would really have the light like the real the real stuff right and so i think that the this is true of every human being and i think it's it's a perfect description of what every human being is doing it's that they're choosing every day whether do i go is today the day i go into the darkness to try to to solve whatever it is that's in there and to discover whatever it is that's in there and again i'm not i'm using darkness and light as as more symbolic or as analogies because I really mean it more in the sense of the unknown. Do I go into the unknown and risk it? Because I don't know what I'm going to find there. And that's the fear. That's the scared part. And stay there. Even the doors open. You know? Am I going to go into the unknown yeah. because I think I may find something greater than what I have now? Or do I stay in my comfort zone of the known, which has its normality? As I said, some days I wake up feeling good and some days I wake up feeling completely depressed. And the only reason that I find most people feel comfortable staying in that no, but if you, if, you, if you isolate them and you speak to them one-on-one, -on -one, they will all tell you, I'm not happy with this. I want more. I need something more. Yeah. But when you get them in, a, in the pack, everybody together, the reason that they accept this and they become comfortable and they build their entire frameworks around this, education systems, careers, everything is, is taking into account the fact that we are going to have these ups and downs and we have all these limitations. It's because everyone else is doing it too, so it's normal. It's amazing how we are psychologically like wired to be like this. If I'm crying and I think something's wrong, but I look around and everybody else is crying too, then suddenly my feeling is dismissed. I, I felt something was wrong, but actually it's not wrong because everybody's doing the same thing, so it's okay. There's this feeling of comfort and, and okayness that comes from just knowing that more people are doing the same thing, right? And I think that you have been somebody that in different moments has provoked people, if I'm honest observing you from the Still outside doing, I guess. yeah you provoke people and i think you provoke people primarily because you're so in touch with this principle of going into the darkness or going into what is unknown and therefore living differently you do things differently you are different because you're not in my opinion sticking to what everyone else does in, in a way right and i think it sounds to me like it's something that's driven huge parts of your life like it, not only now in bhakti marga but just it's throughout ongoing. it's ongoing throughout and I think that that's something that everybody can learn from this. And I think it's somebody that, something that we need to do. I, I often talk in the Guruji perspective that the biggest thing he has done with me 
Um, because sometimes I'll go and talk to somebody and they'll, they'll think they're asking me a very great question. They go, what's the number one lesson you have learned from Paramahamsa Vishwananda? And I just think, I hate this question. Because how do you think I can condense 20 years with a person like him into one lesson that I'm going to tell you now? I don't like it. I, I, I want to tell you 20 lessons. I want to tell you an entire architect plan that he made for my life. And it's manifesting day by day. Like it's not so black and white. And it's definitely not so shallow and simple that I can answer you in one point. But because we have to play the game, I'm like, okay, I'll give you one point. I'm curious what you're going to... One point that I would say is um, 100% actually aligned with what you just said. He constantly pushes me go beyond like and what's the next level so you you think you're smart what's the next level of smart you think you're devoted what's the next level of devotion you think you're confident what's the next level of confidence you think you're anything just what asking the question what's the next level you think you know god what's the next level of knowing god you know you think you you you've understood the world what's the next level of understanding the world and the reason i say this it comes back to, to actually how I want to have this conversation with you. In the Isha Upanishad, it's one of the, the scriptures from the Vedas. There's a verse that says, and I've, I read this, I remember years ago, and I always, I saved it immediately on my computer, that, that verse of like, one day I want to dive into this topic. And the verse says, only for one who knows the, the science of spiritual knowledge and material knowledge, only to that person will he fully enjoy the gifts of immortality, right? Realization in its, in its fullness. Only one who, who is an expert in both fields, right? And so therefore, Guruji telling me, next level, what's the next level? I always feel like at some point in my life, whether I like it or not, I have to get to know everything a little bit. Like I have to face it. I have to face the world. Okay, world, you are Maya, you are limited you are all of these things that we like to throw away so easily these cheap words that we read in scripture like and i believe in them don't get me wrong but what does it mean for me can i can i go in there and be untouched can i go in there and influence it will i go in there and be influenced by it what is it what, what is my relationship to this thing hey god hey guruji am i influenced by you or do i try to influence you do I go in there and touch you with my love and devotion or, or do I only come in to steal, to take, never to give? Like, what is the science in both sides? What is the right way? What is the perfect way to navigate taking what's best from both, behaving in the right way towards him, behaving in the right way towards the world? This is not simple stuff. And I feel like, yeah, so the number one lesson he's taught me is never settle. Never say that you've done it, that it's enough, that you're satisfied. Next level. What's the next level? Depth. And I, that's why having this conversation with you brings this out of me also, because I don't, you know, I, my God, I don't know you to the depth that I even begin to know myself. Of course not. But the one thing I can 100% say, as I said, is that you provoke people to, to think and act differently. So it's like Guruji does that on a huge scale, on a, you know, cosmic scale yeah but i feel like in some way and this is why i'm curious to know more about your life is that in some way you have learned that along the way along your path that you picked that up from somewhere and you've put it quite deep inside yourself to don't follow the line that everyone else is following and to not stand in the comfort zone and to not tell yourself that you yeah, know it's okay it's enough no happily i have I've been gifted. Is that a fair assessment of the situation? I would like, as a kid, I would have said now, like I was always going against the current. Mm -hmm. Like, and I like to go against the current. To go with the currents, you just, it's kind of boring again. Right? Well, like, but then you get what everyone else gets. And if you true. think that's good. Yeah, I would never have seen this picture, like because I haven't been, let's say, this wise as a kid. Mm -hmm. I was constantly always, and I'm still being a controversial person for a lot of people, I, I would say. And the beauty within Bhakti Marga, let's say, or in these conversations that I just can be who I am. Finally, thank you. I could just put all, still there are masks which we have to unwheel. Yeah. And But these 
15 other, which I was carrying and, and changing, like shape shifting and like on a daily basis. I, I just, I am. <laughs> Look at me, I'm smiling and I'm saying I'm feeling so good and happy mm. to, there's no need to have them anymore. Yeah. And if people don't like who I am, so be it. That, like you, you can't even, like when Guruji now put me in this seva position, right? It's again like being in a leading function. You know, as a leader, you can you, you don't have only friends. You always have people who who don't like what you think, what you say, and and therefore, I really do it. When I came to Bhakti Marga to to just make this the circle, like I I I said to Guruji, I'm going to do it calm, kind, and creative. That's my daily intention when I just observe myself. Did I do it creative, calm, and kind? Of course, I fail often, but that's my my own principle let's say how i want to serve him and his mission and amongst all his um devotees let's say which is also a big responsibility this is how i feel it it might sound super easily said mm. but really mm. coming as you said like in ufo boop, into his home amongst people who gave their life to him and then being asked to 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 inspire and to inject certain changes let's say because in the end i i need to acknowledge and i can just make this proof statement here we do nothing it's just we're just tools of right. of god yeah. in an environment when when we are in flow things just come as they are meant to be and and being in this in this sweet spot of my life it's just it just makes me happy. <laughs> like I'm really a happy person. Even I was going to ask you: Are you bored now? Are you unhappy? No, I'm happy. I'm happy. Happy and not bored. Yeah, happy. Lots and not of bored. plenty of drama. <laughs> yeah, and play, you know, three kids, a wife, a company, save a, a lot of stuff. Because that's the thing: you've maintained your family life, you've maintained yeah. your company parallel to doing all of this. Yeah. It's not that you had to drop everything to do this, and I think that's yeah. what makes it more powerful. It's not not running away from it all. Yeah. It's incorporating. I'm just saying now, and building and. Pure vegan restaurant at the moment. You're building a vegan restaurant, yeah. okay? Wow. Uh, <laughs> I was just thinking, Rameshwaras is a busy guy. I was just thinking in my head, like all the things that you listed that you do and everything else. And then it's like, well, and I'm just doing some more stuff. Well, that's why you're not bored. I get it. Makes sense. Okay, I have another question. Which, wait, which Go also ahead. might be running away from something, right? Well, that, like if I would always, need to know you more intricately, dive into your mind to see that. But you, but know, that's you know something that. where I'm thinking you know about, right? Why I'm yeah. why why one keeps himself always busy? Yeah, like because he can or he just doesn't want to see certain things. I'm just trusting the process, to be honest, right. and following what is happening. I would rather make it make a mistake by being too busy than by being too lazy. In a sense, like yeah. in, in if I am hiding something by doing too much. I would hope that my sincere my sincerity in wanting to see what it is that I'm hiding will will make God and, and life show that to me in a healthy way so that I can yeah. encounter it. But I feel like the way to have life cooperate with me and to show me is by remaining active and doing things and trying to move things forward in a positive way. Because if I just do nothing from a supposed space of wisdom, I, I never felt like Guruji would ever support that kind of mentality. You know, like he's... He's a doer. I, I remember so many times wanting to go on holiday, wanting it, because even as a monk, you're not supposed to say those things. Oh my God, he, a monk saying he wants a holiday. You misunderstand. It's not that I want a holiday in the sense of putting my feet up in the beach and, and drinking cocktails. No, that's not what I mean. I mean a holiday from the burden of responsibility, which is not monkhood. It's, it's, it's a holiday from the burden of responsibility that a person assumes and takes on and is given by life, by Guruji, by God. Um, because it's, a, it's, it's something that occupies your mind 24-7. It's something that, that constantly engages your whole being. You know, the minute Guruji said to me, I want you to represent me. So as a Swami in Bhakti Marga, one of my functions is to represent him. Just that sentence. That's a big backpack. Take a holiday from that. Because too late, too late. Yeah, you get my point. <laughs> yeah, because everywhere late. I go, in in my as as I am, I go to people and places where they know what it means to be who I am. And so they're expecting everything from me. Right? So for me to walk into a room 
where nobody knows who I am or what a Swami is or what Guruji is or why I'm wearing robes. So I, I just blend in incognito. Nobody has a clue, right? Is the only setting I can imagine in which the weight of responsibility would be removed from my shoulders. But because I never have that experience, the weight is constantly there. And I don't say that I carry a weight in a negative sense. So I, this I think everybody needs to understand. So for example, imagine that... Uh, um, you work out, and you go to the gym and you're working out. You're doing it on purpose because you want to, because you want to develop health and the muscles and strength and all of this, right? So it's something that you choose to do. It's, it's for a positive reason, for a positive outcome, but it doesn't mean that there are limitations to how much you can handle, that at some point you have to just drop the weights and take a 30 second break so that you can do it again in a good way. Because if you just keep going without the break, you have a muscle injury, you'll tear the muscle, whatever, right? And so I often feels like that, like, as much as I'm, I'm, you know, listening to your example and I'm sharing my, my thoughts and words like, guys, let's do something out of the box. Let's challenge ourselves. Go to the darkness. Sit in the dark. Go to that which is mysterious. Face your fears. All of those things that we said today, which I love. But do it in a calm way. Like, do it with breaks. Do it in a way that is reasonable for you because otherwise you can't hold that weight for so long. You, you think yourself a hero. You're not yet a hero, you know? And I feel like there's the expression that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Like good intentions is the pavement for walking to hell, you know? And I feel it's because people create ideas in their head of being far more heroic than they are. Somebody came to me recently and said, Swami, I want to do what you do. Good luck. Good luck on this. <laughs> I said, what, it, what is it that you think I do? Being close to Guruji, maybe? And well, they, yeah, they, they didn't mean that in that moment, but that's something that often comes about. But they said, no, I want to help people like you help people. I said, well, first of all, thank you for saying that I help people. Um, I'm definitely trying to, right? But can I tell you, what is dri can I ask you, what is driving that? What, what is it that you want to do? He's like, I just feel like whenever I do selfish things, it doesn't make sense for me. I feel like I waste my time. I want to do things that make a difference in other people's lives. This is what I really feel inside. And I said, that's beautiful, beautiful, but... Before you do that, you're going to have to be way more selfish. I said, what do you mean? Said, you're not ready. You cannot give people what you don't have. You cannot help somebody if in helping them, you're going to fall down. Then you're no help. If someone's drowning, you go in there and you want to help them, but you don't know how to swim. Then instead of helping them, now you have two people drowning. This is the big problem I see, right? And I'm telling them, it's not selfish in the traditional sense, but it's that sometimes you got to go into that room. you got to go into that cave and close the door because you have to work on yourself. You have to get out the stuff that's corrupting your behavior and your thoughts and, and you have to get more in touch with the divinity inside of yourself so that you become strong and anchored. Then you can go out again for a fresh attempt to help somebody. You, you go down the stairs to, to pull someone up. You don't go down the stairs to give your hand and then get pulled down, right? And you can only do that if you're strong, that you can hold the person and lift them. Right? And how do you get strong? Yeah. Practice. <laughs> anyway, I, I could unpack this a lot more. Reminds me to actually to your practice, right? Just throwing it out here, just having the conversation with you, seeing you now since nearly six years, being in the proximity to um, Paramahamsa Vishmananda, like, which, which is in itself already a gym, just being beside him. Of course. And you are serving him for so many years, just... Yeah. I always said chapeau, you remember when I said like, yeah, it's, it's not easy to, 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 yeah, to survive these kind of situations ongoing, representing him, serving him, observing yourself within, within this situation yeah, and I, then I, being recognized as his representative. Right. I mean, I certainly am not asking for a medal for any of this, nor am I complaining. I'm, I'm really trying to share what it's like from my point of view, because what you shared with me today, it makes me think about it so much. It inspires those kind of thoughts inside of me um, because it's, it's my cave, it's my darkness, it's my process of being, ha uh, you know, unhappy bored. To and there's never a break. This is how I observe you. you. You just, I have breaks. I can just, I can go out of Sri Pit Nilaya and, and go to Netflix, let's say. <laughs> you don't yeah. have it. You don't have, you guys don't have it. But it's, it's my choice, you. you know. And that's what I mean. Like I, I could only take this life when Guruji told me and was clear that I was ready for it. I asked for it before he gave it to me. 
I remember, yeah. You, you I said, I went to Guruji. I said, I want mm. to be a Swami. And it was not because of um, liking the color orange or anything like this. Definitely not. It was because I, I want to serve you at the next level. I, I want no barriers. I just want to go for it, right? And he looked at me like, not ready, right? I didn't want to hear that. Didn't want to hear it. But yeah. that's what I mean about not forcing things. Like there, there's a natural time comes, for everything to come. come. But, now comes the button at the end. But one needs to be talking about myself yep. again. You need yep. to 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 really observe the moment because life, God, the Guru, you know, things coming into into one's life, and whether you you, you take the route or you miss it, like true, true, true. You have to be conscious. You and, need to be aware that the door is open, otherwise it just, passes you just by. Acknowledge what is happening and then see the opportunity instead of the challenge. True, true. I have another question for you because it's something that's been on my mind. Um, so okay, you have this 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 background clear. We made it. We made it clear. Successful businessman. Okay, in a, in a very Thank basic you. summary. Whatever successful. Whatever successful is right. <laughs> yeah. By worldly standards, they would probably call you a successful businessman, right? Um, successful family life. By whatever again that means, right? Um, and then you come into Guruji. You go through that whole process of of figuring out what it is that you were missing. You're ready. Guruji enters into your life. He throws you in the deep end. He asks you, come, I want you to help, you know, managing Bhakti Marga, serve as a director here. I remember the, the first meeting we had with you, everyone was kind of like, did we vote for this guy? Is this like, no? Oh, okay, no. Guruji just threw him in. I mean, half the people didn't even know who you were, no, right? Which is... I have been three times in Tripit in Alaya. And then immediately he's on the board of directors, just for everyone to understand, like, how crazy this is, right? But Guruji's Guruji. And I feel like I know you so much from the professional side of it, like the work life that we have together, the, the projects, the seva, the, the meetings. And I never ask you from a personal perspective, like in your individual, private, personal life, how has Guruji affected it? How has it changed from year one to year two to year five, you know, outside of the seva, outside of the functions and the roles and, and all of that? Like what is the biggest changes that you've seen in your life? Hmm. You see that I'm just nearly crying is that's what happened that you know what what is Guruji doing to one's life like he's just connecting you to your your atma your your higher self and once you get in tune i'm just feeling thankful i'm 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 feeling thankful this is what happened that i can really say thank you to someone to something about something to really and mean it right you easily said thank you like to be really thankful, to be humbled finally, right? But to serve him in this environment. Still, I'm controversial for a lot of people. Nevertheless, I'm still around, let's say. I don't know how long he's going to allow me to serve him in this seva function. This is what happened on my personal basis. Once in a while, you know, like you know how it happened. I came in like in UFO. He... He never, like the first one and a half years, he didn't even said one single word to me. And that he made me a board member That's back in the days, right? Yeah. And I was just following um, the process and, and getting to know Hinduism. And then I'm still like, like a child and all of this because, yeah, it's, it's just not, there's other things are having a bigger priority sure sure which well actually you said earlier that you never thought you were going to find a guru in an indian no, framework all of this no. tell me about this. Okay. What, what, what was the fear <laughs> what was the f it came from really from deep within right right so my wife you know even like having a wife and kids and we are not married even we are like 14 years together now plus minus and i'm really blessed and 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 so lucky to to that she's you know still together with me and like because I'm obviously not an easy uh, <laughs> an easy being. <laughs> the, the long story short is that um, I sent her to India after um, um, two kids reached this environment. Let's say that she needed to have a break. This was my my thought. Like, no, well, they are twelve months apart from each other. So I was thinking now release her from being a mother. So I sent her to India because a friend called me and they went to this uh, Nadi reader, you know, like mm -hmm. these palm blood 
palm readers. Um, this, and, these, yeah. um, and she went there, long story short, and this guy told her, so what do you want from me? I can't tell you anything. <laughs> so I'm sending her to India. And the guy actually tells um, her nothing. She said, like, you go right in front of your door, so just talk to him. But I can tell you something about your relationship. So he didn't say your husband. Mm -hmm. So this was in the, in the early days of our relationship because she was raised from her parents, like, you know, like when you get an imprint, be married. And for me, it was always like, it's just, it's not needed, right? Like we, we are anyway married. I love her, whatever this means in the beginnings when you meet someone. And I mean, then, you look like the most married, unmarried couple I've ever seen. But yeah. yeah, like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> nobody would know you're not married unless yeah. you tell them. That's the point. But anyway. And we, have, we, we got three kids together, right? Right. Um, so that guy told her, the guru is in front of your door, but he told her something about our relationship back in a previous life. So when she was in the Brahmin class and I was in the untouchables, we, f we, we, we fell in love. It was forbidden. The parents became aware. They put boiling water above me. And finally, I died. That's the short version of it. And that's actually what Heavy. I had within. Like the smell, the sound, the clothing, the, the prayers. Like everything related to India, let's say, was no. Got it. I don't like this. <laughs> then she comes back from India and actually tells me the story. And I was thinking, okay, the places you fear the most, boom. Two weeks later, I got an, an invitation of an Hindu wedding. You know how the guru works? Like once you're being, to yeah. drop in step, some little things here and there. Step yeah. by step. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I was invited um, to Sri Pitinalaya, to his home here in Germany. And the guy who invited me actually had a key to everything because he was doing facilitation. So I, I actually dived deep into every room, the museum, the temple was built, was being built at this day. Mm -hmm. And I was coming home and, and actually sharing to um, my wife, Haraye, what this place is about. Because I was thinking, like, you're drinking some chai. Having, you even having, call her your wife. I told yeah. you, you're the most married, unmarried people ever. Anyway, drinking chai, going. Yeah, having having these nice saris, which I didn't like, right? And and you just, where's God? You don't go go for prayers to do something. Not for no, chai and saris. Judging it to the, um, the max. To the max. <laughs> And once, you know, I dived a little bit deeper into it, it just started making sense, right? And then the first darshan and Guruji just gave me, I, uh, let's, let's call it a vision. Like I was literally sitting in the darshan hall and I was thinking, first of all, that's the guy. Even I don't like it, that's the next level, the next step, whatever. The teacher, let's call it the teacher. Yeah. I felt this guy, he's going he's gonna to challenge me now. And knowing the past life from, because I sent Haraye to India, like to actually, this is how beautiful life and these connections work, right? So he, she comes back, I'm going to Darshan. He gives me a vision where I was thinking, well, wow. two weeks later, the next Darshan, he sends me to India. I said, honestly, no, okay, <laughs> India. I come back from India to make this story also short as a devotee. Like right away, and within India, there you know certain things happened there. This was in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, Vrindavan yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I just, yeah, you know, I, I became a devotee. Yeah. On a shortcut, coming back to Germany, third darshan, and then having an interview with him, and actually making him wait for me because nobody told me that I'm supposed to wait for him, right? So, actually, people were running around the property looking for me. Where is where is this guy? So I came into this room and then he was sitting there together with Sparta and this conversation lasts like five minutes. I still, when I just coming into this room, having him sitting there on the table, so my, and I know my heart started beeping. I was like, what, what, is, what is going on now? And then he smiles like you do now. <laughs> and, and he asks me, how was India? Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and said, you know, right? So you tell me now, right? That's the done deal. And then he looked at me and said, ah, oh, yeah. And then he said, yeah. And then he just asked me, like, do you want to be part of the, of the committee? STC, that's the term it has right. been used here. Steering committee, right. 
Like, but it's the tea is kind of it's bizarre. It's bizarre. So I had no clue what this is about, and I said yes, of course. And he said, "You don't want to think about it." I said, "No, that's that's done deal now. Like I'm your disciple. Your devotee disciple is way too far. So, and you are my guru. Right. So I do. So, and then he left." He just gave me a little ring on my finger, which I couldn't get off my finger for six months. <laughs> and he left, and Pata was sitting there, like you again, smiling. <laughs> What can you do? <laughs> you, it's like you, you do these things, yeah. and you're like, oh yeah, well that's yeah. that's that's Guruji right there. Yeah, okay. And he just asked me, so you know what the SEC is about? And I said, no, I have no, no clue. clue. A meeting, and then he said, no. In your world, it's becoming kind of in the in the board in the executive uh, committee kind yeah. of thing, like CEO type figures. Yeah. And then he left also. And then I was sitting, I'm like, that's crazy. I still, I, if I just feel, tune myself into the situation, I was like, Pff. I remember those early days of the board as well. When you came to the meeting and then afterwards, like the, 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 the first two, three, four meetings, everyone like starting to understand like what this actually was going to be and what the roles were and what this meant for all of us. And then seeing everybody's individual reactions of like some people just, Yeah, yeah, you know, I was ready for this since years. And then some people just going like, dear God, this is everything I wanted to avoid in my life. You know, like you had, I remember Swami Aniruddha. You remember like every meeting he would say like, I, I'm not a guy for this stuff. Like I, yeah. I want to be in a cave and meditating with my Kriya and my deity. And, you know, like I'm, I'm here to love God. And I just remember like, like this was almost his, his own like therapeutical process that he had to be saying this all the time to remind himself like, I didn't ask for this. It's okay. I'm doing this because my guru says it's good for me to do it, right? It's like, because he was scared almost that he's having to change or whatever, but it was funny because so many of us had different reactions and different, you know, experiences in that in that moment. And I remember, see, Ramishwaras, for those of you who don't know, Ramishwaras is the, the goosebumps guy. So like you're, you <laughs> shared it, I have to, I have to. <laughs> so we have this running joke with him that whenever a point, if like, if we're saying something, pitching an idea or whatever, if it doesn't get goosebumps from him, it's not a good idea. It's not a good idea. Don't do it. And I think the first meeting we were in on the board, like you jumped on top of a chair or whatever yeah, it was. Table, you jumped the on the table. So like we're having a meeting. You have to understand the context. Nobody ever dared to do anything even remotely crazy as this in a meeting, right? So we're sitting there, some gentlemen, some ladies sitting there having this very cordial conversation about Bhakti Marga and Guruji and um, some steps that we have to take and projects and da 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 And this guy just jumps on the table at the end of the meeting, starts putting his arms out, talking about goosebumps that he's getting. And I feel like we have to do this. I feel like we have to do that. What are we here to do? Like going straight to the essence of the whole thing. And I remember just sitting like, because you, you jumped on the table right in front of me. And I was just staring up thinking, yeah, I, I, I think I get why Guruji put him in the board. Like this is going to be different, <laughs> just different. I don't know what this is going to be, but this is going to be different. So yeah, that was, that was fun times. Good, uh, good memories. No, no, no table jumping since then. Yeah, one more. I did two. You did a second one. Yeah, the Trump one. You remember? Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. We were, we did a, we did a, a workshop recently, some, some couple months ago, and I think I was counting, I was tracking how many goosebumps you got per day. We did like a seven day workshop on the board. And I think it was one day you got seven times goosebumps. And I just thought, this is so insane. Like you had them in your legs, you had everywhere. I, I don't remember the last time I got goosebumps in my life, man. Like maybe the other day, actually, some, like I was listening to some music and, and something, like just scratched the surface a little bit. I was like, maybe. So yeah, no, just a, a funny, interesting point about you. Very sensitive guy. Uh, feel a lot physically, literally fan manifesting. Um, so yeah. Don't change, Ramesh, for us. Be, the be your goosebumps guy. The beauty guy. is that I'm just doing it, right? And maybe I'm doing it because I couldn't do it for plus 25 years. Talking about goosebumps. Expressing everything. Just being who I am. like Love it. And if I love something and I feel it's right, like that's the place to say. Love it. And what we also need to acknowledge, right? Having, let's, talking about board meetings. Yeah. Um, it's just like working... In, in the framework of Bhakti Marga with all of you guys, it's still such a beauty because it's so different. Like, and Guruji puts like, like so many different people and opinions and, and, and emotions and feelings and whatnot together to actually make us unite and, and make us find the best solution together. So, and um, 
It's a Some, wild experience. Yeah. Someone needs to jump on the table also <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> no, like I said, don't yeah. change. Be, you know, it's everything that you share today and um, and everything that I've experienced from you. I think it's it's fun. It's yeah. different. It's nice. I like it a lot. I support it. Um, the most, or I need back to the family. Just want to share, like, one of the most ex expect nothing, and then you can't be disappointed, right? Mm -hmm. What I didn't expect it to just use this term is like what happened to my to my family life, like living just twenty k's of far away from from the ashram. Yeah, and now having the kids growing up and like with all of you guys. Yeah, like that. It's. They're super integrated. You have goosebumps. goosebumps you see, <laughs> <laughs> goosebumps. Right. It's such a grace, and I'm so thankful about it. To to have the kids with you, all of you, like you gave your life to Guru and God. Yeah, you don't do any wrong. Let's say we are, not to. we are coming in this environment. Like sometimes, like even now in Germany, there's a big snow being mentioned in the in the news. Like every every. The, the schools are closed today, yeah. but nothing happens outside so far. So the kids are actually, I don't know where they are. They're just, that's their home here. Just like, somewhere in the ashram. Yeah. They're just running around here now. I took all their stuff. I told them I have no time. Dad needs to do certain things. So they go to the kids' room. They Maybe they are now in the sound studio or in the kitchen. Like they are having an, an home in Sri Pitanilaya. Guruji asked the, the little boy to serve Krishna on the altar. Like that, without words. That's that's the most beautiful thing which happened in my life, having this dharma of raising kids in this in world which is falling apart currently. It's like out out there. You, you know, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. fear and the depression and and what not is happening, and this digital environment you had in podcast about it. Like. Yeah. To have them here, to 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 be part of it, and to be allowed to to. Um, to have this experience together with them, they actually don't want to be at our. We have a nice place, right? We let you do, go, yeah. But they just want to come here. So every morning, and if they don't go to prayers, he actually becomes pretty pissed. <laughs> <laughs> like, can I do Abhishek? I'm like, I need I, to walk the dog. Amazing, love it, uh, love it. Again, I, I could, I could name you people that have the exact opposite experience. But I was like, no, let's let's just stay positive. Nice that that your son feels that way. Really good. Well, thank you for, for having this open exchange with me. Thank you for having um, me. I'm sure we could, you know. We could go on. Of course. Unpack. How long did we do? I don't know. I, I don't, don't know. know either. It's, it, feels, it, feels, it feels good. I think we can leave stuff, stuff for a future conversation if we, if we need to. I think, I, again, my summary is that I, I appreciate having someone like you around, for sure, um, from my side. I mean, it's not nothing to do with me, but just from my point of view, because... It, it makes me think also that we can be more than what we are. I, I don't see Bhakti Marga and what we do as being exclusively a Indian, Hindu, um, religious, conventional ashram, you know, temple community. I see us as a community of people who love God and who do it in the framework provided to us by Guruji because he becomes our reference and that needs to fit in everyone's journey and it needs to be as open and, and accommodating for as many people as possible with very different personalities and very different lifestyles and very different everything. And so I like it. I love it that you are here with us adapted in like completely in as your whole family is. And at the same time you remain individual. Um, and I like it very much. So yeah, thanks for having thank you. this chat with me. And just to maybe to give it out to the world, like just as Swami Ravati Kanta said, 70 countries plus, feel welcome we welcome everybody gurujis welcome everybody there is no in and out and these are lovers of god you're gonna meet in these places and there are a lot of beautiful ashrams around the world already really something to to you know back in my seva function just come to <laughs> to our website and check it out <laughs> okay awesome well thank you swami thank you very much jay gurudev